Hello to all of my nurses and future nurses. Today I'm gonna to show you how to start a secondary line to an already infusing primary. I'm also gonna show you how to back prime, which we use once we already have a secondary line connected and we need to start a new antibiotic or a new IV piggyback medication. So if you haven't seen my primary infusion video, I suggest you go and watch it because that's where you're gonna find all the steps of starting a primary infusion. Today I'm gonna to skip all of those steps and I'm just going to connect my secondary. Okay, so although I have an Alaris pump that my primary is infusing from, this tubing is compatible with all tubing, okay? So you could use this even if you were gonna use it on gravity and you were gonna have your IV piggyback via gravity or if you were gonna use a different type of pump. For the most part, this tubing is compatible, okay? So I just wanna show you the tubing says secondary medication set. And one really easy way to make sure that you have grabbed the correct tubing is just by looking at the back your secondary tubing, your IV piggyback tubing, will have a blue hanger that comes attached to it. So you'll see the blue hanger and it's also pictured here. Now, every tubing has a perforated line down the bag, okay? So you don't have to, you know, put your teeth to it. You just look for the perforated line and just rip down the perforated line to open the bag. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and rip the bag open and grab my tubing. So my tubing comes like this. It comes with the blue hanger and it comes with my tubing. The first thing that I like to do, this helps me to remember and make sure that I don't leave the room without doing this step. First thing that I like to do is grab my primary bag and hang it on my hanger, okay? Because this is the best way for me to actually administer this correctly. The primary bag needs to be below the secondary bag. So notice, okay, I just wanna bring your attention to this. The hanger came with my secondary tubing, okay? But it is for the primary bag. So that's the first thing that I like to do. The second thing that I like to do is this tubing comes open, meaning the roller clamp is open, okay? I wanna make sure that it's close before I spike my bag because once I spike my bag that medication is going to run through now notice that my secondary tubing is not that long okay so I could lose my medication very quickly it's not that long because it doesn't need to be this does not need to reach my patient it only needs to reach the first port from my primary bag so let's just go to this I just want to bring your attention to this this is my primary bag, and if I go down my fluid chamber, I follow my tubing down. The first port that I find is where I'm going to attach this. So sometimes I've seen some of my students attach their piggyback to this low port. And you can see that the piggyback is really stretching, it's really being pulled. And that should be your first indicator that you have attached it to the wrong port, okay? If it's pulling, that's a first clue. That's why you check your work and you say, wait, does this make sense? I shouldn't be connecting it to my patient. I shouldn't be connecting it to the low port. I need to connect it to the first port from the fluid chamber. So that would be this one, okay? So that's why this tubing is not as long as if you were to look at my primary tubing. Look at this. You see it's in the pump and it's going down the pump and look how long it is, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and close my roller clamp. Now, if my primary tubing port did not have one of these antimicrobial caps on it, I would clean it right at this point, just because we need to allow it to dry. But it does have a microbial cap, antimicrobial cap on it, so it's considered clean, and I'll show you that once we get there, so I don't need to wipe it. So right now, all I've done is hung my primary below and clamped my tubing, okay? The next step is 
Obviously, I would have checked my medication, done my five rights. I'm going to go ahead and take off my blue port. And I'm going to spike my back. So now my bag is spiked, I can go ahead and hang it on my pole. Always hanging with the label facing you so that when you walk in the room, it's very easy for you to see it or any nurse or anyone who's walking in the room, okay? Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit so that you can see this a little bit better. Now, there is another way of priming this tubing, but most textbooks will show you this way because this is the way they prefer you to do it. And also because but depending on different pumps, different tubings, this is the way you will have to do it. So I'm gonna show you the first way of priming this. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze my fluid chamber and I wanna squeeze it enough to have fluid up on, at least until the line, okay? But pretty much about one third full. I don't wanna squeeze it too much because remember you need to be able to watch your drip chamber to make sure your medication is, is infusing, okay? I just wanna squeeze it enough to have some fluid in there and this prevents air from developing. So now the next thing that I'm going to do, now a lot of nurses like to use a glove at this point. If you're able to control your flow rate then it's not necessary. I'm gonna keep the cap on and I'm going to slowly watch as my infusion, excuse me, as my fluid is running down the tubing and I'm basically gonna prime the tubing very slowly. So once the fluid gets to the tip, I'm going to stop. Okay. And so I see that the fluid has gotten to the tip and I'm going to close my roller clamp, okay? So now it's closed. So now, because like I said, because my primary um, tubing has this antimicrobial cap on it, I can go ahead and take it off. Now I just wanna show you inside. There is a little swab in here with an antiseptic solution. So that makes it, that keeps it clean. So I can go ahead and connect it. Now, if it wasn't on there, then obviously I would wipe it per policy with whatever cleaning agent they use. Now, I can technically, because I'm on a pump, I can technically go ahead and open my roller clamp. I can leave the room without opening this and the pump will not tell you. So it's very important that before you leave the room, you make sure that your roller clamp to your secondary is open. So now what I'm going to do, and this is not as important because you are you might use a different pump, but today I have the Alaris pump here. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. So my infusion needs to infuse at a rate of 100 milliliters an hour and it's gonna infuse for an hour, okay? Cause I have a hundred milliliters in there. So now most of these Alaris pumps actually have the medication in there. So all you would do is find it in your drug library, but mine doesn't have it. So I'm just gonna basically set the rate and the volume to be infused. So channel select secondary. And like I said, my fluid rate was a hundred. My volume to be infused is a hundred. But remember, I primed my tubing, so I don't technically have 100 in here. I'm going to go ahead and put 90 just to be safe and prevent myself from getting air in my tubing. So I'm going to say volume to be infused is 90. And then I'm going to start. Now, this pump, before I press start, it says, is your roller clamp open? So that's another reminder to check your roller clamp. So what I should be seeing right now is my secondary infusing but my primary should not be infusing. So just a quick reminder, when you hang a piggyback, remember that your secondary is gonna be stopping your primary for the amount of time that it's infusing. So for the next hour, only my ciprofloxacin is gonna be infusing. My primary, my normal saline will not. Because it's on a pump, and because I have my piggyback set up appropriately, even if it wasn't on a pump, what will happen is once this is complete, 
automatically my primary will start infusing. So because I'm on a pump, I don't have to come back and reprogram the rate of my primary. But if I was doing this by gravity, I would have to come back and put my primary back up on top and set my rate. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna teach you is something called back priming. Back priming is very helpful because it helps to prevent us from disconnecting this constantly from the port. Obviously, every time we disconnect this, there's a potential that we might be introducing bacteria to the port. So back priming will allow me to now hang my next antibiotic. Let's say it's been 12 hours, the next one is due. Back priming allows me to do that without having to disconnect the tubing to reprime it. So what I'm going to do is my primary is currently infusing. If you look, there's nothing left in my bag. There's a couple of drops left in my bag, but not much. My medication finished. I want to get rid of all of this old medicine that's in here so that I can hang my new medication. So what I'm going to do is now, rather than priming the, the tubing with the medication the way we did the first time, I'm going to back prime with my sodium chloride, my primary above my secondary, and you can see that fluid is infusing. And that fluid is actually going into my bag. Remember that it was almost empty before? So what happens is I just primed my tubing with the saline. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it right back up. You don't need to fill the bag up. About a third or halfway is enough. So I'm gonna hang my secondary the way it should be again. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp my tubing because I don't wanna make a mess. I'm going to remove this bag. So notice this right here is partly the medication that was in the tubing, the old medication that was in the tubing and the saline. I'm gonna just put this here for a moment, but that's gonna go in the garbage. And then I'm gonna go ahead and attach my new antibiotic. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on top of the pump and I'm gonna open my roller clamp and I'm gonna set my pump for my IV piggyback. So that is how you prime your secondary line to start a secondary on a already infusing primary line. And I also showed you how to back prime to hang a new antibiotic once you already have that piggyback infusing. I hope this was helpful. As always, feel free to write a question or a comment in my comment box. You can tell that I really do read them and I appreciate all the positive feedback. Um, if there's anything that I can answer for you, I always try. And if I can't, somebody else can. So feel free to write some comments and questions in the comment box. Alrighty, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe.